can't wait to see what it looks like. <laughs> Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, it's part 23 of the Project Kit Build and this is the part certainly I've been waiting for anyway and I'm sure you have as well. That's getting some paint on the car, uh, getting the bodywork painted because I can't wait to see what it looks like. So I'll try my best to narrate through this. Um, as I've said before, I'm no painter. I uh, wasn't there when Mark was doing the painting obviously and uh, Mark's keen to point out he isn't a painter either, he's a carpenter by trade so he's learning as he goes along with painting, reading up about it, trying to do the right thing. I'm sure some professional people will watch this and see things that Mark's doing wrong or that I do wrong and um, yeah, we're learning as we go along. So at the moment, as you can see, uh, Mark is just painting the inside of the panels, so the inside of the bonnet boot and the uh, inside of the doors. The reason Mark's got four doors there actually is because there's two doors there that he was testing the lacquer on. So as I've mentioned previously, uh, we're going to put uh, like flake, metallic flake in with a lacquer. So Mark's used Mark's using those two spare doors there just to practice with. Unfortunately, it's really difficult to show how good the finish looks. Uh, it just doesn't come out very well on the videos. Um, you can't really see the metal flake in the lacquer at all. Uh, but it is there, it looks really cool. Uh, and under artificial light, it just doesn't show that well. Kind of can't wait to get it outside to have a proper good look at it. Again, just the way that light is reflecting off the black, it makes it look like there's loads and loads of little bits in the paint. There are some bits of dust here and there, but um, most of that reflecting back is the metal flake in the lacquer. So we've moved on, I think this is next day now. So Mark's going back to doing the really boring part, which is kind of flatten it, wet flatten it in preparation for the base coat to go on. Now there was a bit of an issue with the paints. So Mark bought all the paint consumables um, and painting materials from the same place as well as the base coat lacquer, uh, primer. Uh, they provided it all, uh, matched all the paints together. Um, unfortunately what Mark found out was that the base coat they had provided was a like a single stage base coat, so it was a base coat, uh, or it's a top coat basically, so rather than be a base coat it was top coat, so it was glossy black uh, rather than being base which usually comes out dull when it dries and then you apply the lacquer and that then gives the gloss. So uh, Mark went back to the paint supplier and also took some independent advice as well um, and the general consensus was that it wouldn't be a problem. So Mark flatted down the base coat before putting the lacquer on and it seemed to adhere ad 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 perfectly okay but it was a bit of a worry for a while. Thank you. 
So obviously Mark's just giving that a final sort of wet sand at the moment, ready for the base coat to go on. I can't remember how many how many coats of base coat he's put on. It'll be difficult to see from the time lapse. But I think it's it's either three or four from memory. There's like a tack coat first and then a couple of wet coats and maybe a final one and then Mark flatted back the final coat before applying the lacquer. Uh, the lacquer had uh, one tack coat, then a coat with the metal flake in it and then it had four further coats of lacquer over the top of that. So the actual paint thickness is pretty generous, uh, far better than you would get on a standard sort of factory car. And of course the big advantage of that is if there's plenty of paint there you can do quite a lot of correction with it afterwards. So like I say, Mark's no expert. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some runs and imperfections that as long as you've got plenty of paint, plenty of lacquer on there, it gives you uh, something, some margin for error if you like. So just to bring you up to speed on where we are, as you know obviously I upload the videos as quick as I can. They all take quite a long time to edit. We are, the shell at the moment is back on all four wheels. So we've got the subframe in it, suspension in it, and obviously the body's all painted. So as you can see here, here's the first base coat going on. Again, apologise about the visibility. It's really, really difficult to spray on a black car. There is an extractor in there, but again, it's only a small one. It takes a long time to extract all the paint out of the air, so the visibility gets pretty poor. Uh, speaking to Mark the other day, actually, and he said he's never sprayed a black car again. <laughs> so, uh, just because it shows up everything. So, I, I know some metallics can be difficult to paint, but I think black, you really have to make sure the prep work is absolutely perfect on it because under, especially under artificial light, it, it just shows up every single imperfection. I think you can see Mark there actually painting in a hoodie. So uh, he did text me halfway through doing this paint uh, and uh, said he was gonna get some white paint in overalls because it, even just the dust and the fibers off the hoodie end up in the paint. So you should be really wearing lint-free overalls, which is what Mark done when it comes to applying the lacquer. So I do apologise, I, I missed that bit there. So Mark was just painting the sticks, the seam sticks, which go down the seam strips. So that's had a couple of coats of base on, on the strips and the seams themselves. Then the seam strips have been put in, put on the car, and then it's painted again over. So just to make sure there's paint on the inside, paint on the seam, um, and it's not just going on on a private car. So obviously that's the base coat done. You can see the paint's looking a little bit dull there. That's because it's been flattened back and now Mark's going on with the lacquer and that lacquer will have the uh, metal flake in it. And then once that's gone off, it's a case of uh, just apply more lacquer then. So four more coats of lacquer before the paint finally finished. going around there with a LED light, again just looking for imperfections, runs, dry areas. It's really really difficult spraying in a, I mean that's Mark certainly not got a small workshop but it's relatively small. Uh, it obviously so much nicer to be doing it in a spray booth with proper extraction, heat, better lighting. So I'm quite nervous about putting the car back together now because um, 
yeah, when it's painted and the paint's perfect like that, it's so easy just to slip with a screwdriver or when you're trying to get trims in and things like that, just scratching the paint, which I hope doesn't happen, but yeah, you just gotta be really, really careful. Luckily, the paint, thinking about it, the paint will have had probably a couple of weeks to dry before we start doing any proper uh, rebuilding of the car. It'll probably be sort of three, four weeks before we're putting window trims and things like that, window seals back in. So I think we're, we're getting to kind of the final stages of lacquer going on here now. So yeah, that's the shell nearly painted. Wheel arches are up on the garage door there. And obviously the doors, bonnet and boot. So for some reason in the moment, this kind of tire lap, time lapse comes to a bit of an abrupt end. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Maybe the SD card's run out. Since it's been painted, I think the car's had a couple of weeks. We have found the paint has sunk back a bit. Uh, Mark's not, he's a bit of a perfectionist, Mark, and he wants a perfect paint finish, so he's not 100% happy with it. It does want sort of wet flatting and compounding, uh, and Mark's actually going to send that to a professional valeter or a professional detailer to get that done. When I say Mark's going to, it is at a professional detailer's now, being wet flatted and polished, uh, just to make sure. Again, you know, it's first, Mark's no expert at painting and certainly no expert at flatting and polishing as well, so he's getting a professional to do that. But as you can see, that's first sort of look before the doors and that have gone back on. It's looking pretty good. Like I say, it's hard to pick out the metal flake just because it doesn't show very well under artificial lighting. But the paint finish, I'd be I'd be very proud of it. I think Mark's done a really great job, actually. Like I say, it's a black car, really difficult to get the perfect paint job on anyway. But I just cannot wait to see what it, it's going to look like when it comes back from being flattened and polished now. And getting it out into the light as well. I just, it's going to look amazing. Can't wait. Just a quick walk around the car with me. So this should be a 2K video, this bit of video here. But um, like I say, it, when it looks plain black like that, it's hard to sort of imagine what it's going to look like with all the accessories, trims and everything like that on, but I think it's going to look really good. And so we're at the end of the video already, relatively short one this week, but thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. I re would really like to build up the subscriber base a bit more. And I will look forward to catching up with you next time. Cheers, guys. Have a great week.